I want to now go over a scenario that happens very often, a situation when whenever you're trying to finish a choke, you end up in, in this position where you know the choke is not tight, you know there is only um, a few seconds until your partner escapes and you have to start connecting to something else before you either lose the back or you start connecting to this next submission, locking the triangle from the back, okay? So it's a very, very specific situation. Of course, um, you can start locking this submission right off the start, but I don't feel it would probably be like your first go-to. And even myself, like, I never take the back and I start locking the triangles from the back as my first submission. I always start chaining submissions together, and let's say the choke is not working or I feel my partner's doing a good job of feigning, or I'm losing the grip of the choke, that's when I started throwing the triangle in, okay? So let's start, let's get this to the side here first. So uh, let's say I did everything. I got the, the, the grip on the collar. I got the grip on the other collar. I'm falling to the side. I'm stepping on the hip. I'm getting to the angle that I need. But a lot of times my partner is able to maybe start breaking my grip that I have on the collar right here. Maybe start pulling my hand all the way over to the other side. There's many different ways that we can try to imagine my point escaping out of the position, okay? But I want you guys to imagine this scenario as you almost, or you're ready to lose the position that you're losing, the, the choke, okay? That's when we're going to start connecting to the triangle. So I'm going to start, a lot of times, he's the feigning, uh, the grabbing my arm. So the first step that we did for the choke, I'm going to start using that same step to initiate my triangle. So I'm gonna start pushing him down and I'm gonna start throwing my leg over. Okay, look how I try to throw my leg over and bring my heel down to the ground, all the way until I'm able to catch his arm underneath my leg. Okay, but now there's gonna to need to be a big switch over. So look how I do abandon the collar grip at this point and I start controlling my, my leg on the opposite leg, on the opposite arm. So look how this leg comes across and at first, Look how I try to grab my knee. So a lot of times you see people coming right over here and grabbing their shin like that. But there's a lot of space for your partner to move their shoulder for them to try to escape. Or what happens to me is that they come back with their hand in. Okay, so the hand comes back in. So now you guys start locking the triangle pretty much with both arms locked. So look how instead of grabbing my shin at this point, I'm going to go under his chin and I'm going to grab my knee right here. Okay, once I get a hold of my knee, I want to start switching sides with my hips. So you guys can start releasing this hook and I'm going to start switching sides. As I switch sides, I slowly release the hand down to my shin right over there. Okay, so as I switch sides, I slowly adjust until I land right over here into this position. Okay, when you guys are going to lock, I can pretty much lock at this point, so I can just throw my leg over and I can lock the triangle off the, this position. But look how I try to bring my heel all the way underneath my partner's armpit. So I use my hand on the ground to create that angle. And look how I step my left foot on the ground at the same time. Now I'm gonna come off my elbow and I'm gonna start walking around my partner's head, bringing my heel all the way closer to his armpit. Start doing this. Once my heel is underneath his armpit, I now can start throwing my leg over. It'll be much easier for me to lock that full triangle. And look how most important, as I was getting the angle, my calf, it's right around my partner's neck. A lot of times when people lock from this position, there is still room for your partner to try to escape or they try to come up to their knees and you guys end up kind of like losing that triangle. Okay, or a lot of times you're training with somebody that's bigger and you have a hard time locking the triangle because you're opening the elbows. Okay, so it's hard for you to lock the triangle. So look how I grab my leg, I come off my elbow, and then I use the pose of my hand and the leg that I have on the ground to move myself around my partner. All the way until I'm able to lock my leg and wrap it fully around my partner's neck. Okay, when I get to this position, just got to finish the triangle. And what I like to do from here, there is two different ways that you can finish this. You guys can finish as a shoulder lock. So look how I connect both hands onto his elbow and I start bringing his elbow in. 
as a shoulder lock. You guys can try to squeeze your legs and finish as a choke. Or a lot of times, let's say the press is fighting hard, resisting this choke. I am trying to squeeze, they're just resisting. I always look to grab my partner's leg. Because the closer I get to his leg, the more I tighten things up, the more I adjust the triangle that I have. Okay, so I just try to slowly come up, get a hold of his leg, and then I bring his leg close to my chest, making sure that I get a both underhook. Once you guys get the underhook on the leg, you guys can connect your elbows, gable grip. Now I'm gonna start bridging, tighten that up, and finish in the choke, okay? Like I said, there's less detail on, on hugging your partner's leg. It is really as a last option. Whenever I'm trying to finish the triangle, it's not working, I try to grab the shoulder, it didn't work, I do aim for that leg to try to adjust, thing, adjust the triangle and make sure things get even tighter after that position. But it is one of those positions where it's hard to lock it, but if you do manage to go all the way to the triangle, fully locked, it's very hard for the person to escape and, and very hard for them to resist at that point. So I start on his back. I start, let's say, the choke, fall to the side, start stepping and getting to the angle that I need for the choke. He starts to defend. Maybe he starts to pull my elbow open. I throw my leg over. And then right away, look how I connect my left hand to my knee. Okay. When I, collect, when I connect my left hand to my knee, I do want this connection just to make sure my partner is not moving much. If you guys go right away for your shin, he will start turning side to side. And you guys will feel there's a lot of room in between your legs and your partner's chest. So look how right away I connect and I stay tight. Now as I'm switching sides, I'm gonna start sliding my leg down to my shin. So I release my left hook, switch sides. And look how when I switch sides, I'm not laying down. I'm coming straight up to my elbow, okay? Got to this position, I grab my shin, I leave my elbow and I post up on my hand. Now I just gotta adjust my leg around my partner's neck, finish locking the triangle, and then I got the first submission. Shoulder lock, I do have even like a wrist lock at this point, or I can start grabbing and getting close, using my elbow to get close to the leg, all the way until I finish the choke from the back, okay? Like I said, I want you guys, after you study all these submissions, to start connecting them, to start putting, you know, as the submission one, two, three, and of course, use your partner's escape as the way for you guys to start chaining those together. So you have the first one, the choke. Second one, the armbar. The armbar didn't work, you guys. Third one would be the triangle. The triangle didn't work, you guys switch back to the armbar. The better you guys can start connecting these submissions, I feel like the higher level uh, with chokes and, and connections and just controls from the back will go. Okay, so just focusing on first learning the step by step, and then your second phase, the second step, it will be for you guys to put in and connect the submissions together.